Hello, I am Manal, interest student at CSS. We are going today to talk about the sweet science of honey. Honey has long been acknowledged for its nutritional and medicinal benefits, with evidence of its harvesting depicted on rock paintings dating back 8,000 years. It is the only insect that drives natural products with industrial and nutritional and therapeutic value. Let's now watching how do bees make honey. The Western or European honeybee pollinates three fourths of the fruits, veggies, and nuts that we eat. We'd be in trouble without them. Of course, there's a reason we don't call them zucchini bees, almond bees, or apple bees. They also give us honey. One healthy hive will make and consume more than 50 kilograms of honey in a single year. And that takes a lot of work. Honey is made from nectar, but it doesn't come out of flowers as that golden sticky stuff. But after finding a suitable food source, bees dive in head first using their long, specially adapted tongues to slurp up tiny sips of nectar into one of two stomachs. A single bee might have to drink from more than a thousand flowers to fill its honey stomach which can weigh as much as the bee itself when full of nectar. Now on the way back to the hive, digestive enzymes are already working to turn that nectar into sweet gold. When she returns to the hive, the forager bee will vomit the nectar into the mouth of another worker, and that bee will vomit it into another bee's mouth, and so on. This game of regurgitation telephone is an important part of the honey making process, since each bee adds more digestive enzymes to turn long chains of complex sugars in the raw nectar into simple monosaccharides like fructose and glucose. Now at this point, the nectar is still pretty watery, so the bees beat their wings and create an air current inside the hive to evaporate and thicken the nectar, finally capping the cell with beeswax so the enzyme-rich bee barf can complete its transformation into honey. Because of its low water content and acidic pH, honey isn't a very inviting place for bacteria or yeast spoilage. It has an incredibly long shelf life in the hive or in your pantry. Honey has even been found in Egyptian tombs dating back thousands of years, pretty much unspoiled. Although I wouldn't personally eat it, you know, just in case. For one pound of honey, tens of thousands of foraging bees will together fly more than three times around the world and visit up to eight million flowers. That takes teamwork and organization. And although they can't talk, they do communicate with body language. Foragers dance to tell other bees where to find food. A circle dance means flowers are pretty close to the hive, but for food that's farther away, they get their waggle on. There are more than 300 types of honey in the world. It can be smoky, spicy, fruity, or flor floral, and even as dark as cola. The honey itself, it contains at least 181 components, making it one of the best alternative treatments for wound healing, beauty remedies, and throat infections. What does science say about it? its ability for improving the health? This is what we are going to see. The honey has a distinctive flavor and it's commonly referred to as a healing honey. Manuka honey has become uh, increasingly popular in recent years, although it's, so, it's quite expensive. Uh, manuka honey is the honey it's made by bees that forage on the flowers of the manuka bush in New Zealand and some part of Australia. The manuka honey is contain a unique ingredient, they call it methylglycosyl, and this one specifically, which has specific, uh, specific antimicrobial uh, uh, properties, which is why it's commonly referred to as the healing honey. The higher uh, the con concentration of MGO, the stronger the antibacterial effect. Flowerwood honey is one of the three most famous honey in America. It 
it won the best honey in the world twice in 2005 and in 2007. Besides the usual health benefit of any honey uh, he has also such as preventing bacterial growth and it is benefit in treating skin conditions, colds and cough, sourwood honey makes the exception of rule in regards to antioxidant power. Sourwood honey has a higher antioxidant power than manuka honey has. It's well known that the darker honey is the most powerful antioxidant activity it has. Yet, sourwood honey is so rare that a good crop sometimes appear only once every decade. Now we are going to show you how to check if your honey is pure or adulterated. These lovely ingredients in honey made by natural cannot only sweeten your life, but it is also abundant in minerals and nutrients and living enzymes. If you want to enjoy the benefits of using honey, you must consider it is priority before buying. The biggest problem with honey it is quality. It can be quite a challenge to find a good pure honey. Now in the coming video, I will, you can see how to detect it, uh, the fake honey. If you like your food, how you like, plain and simple, that's it. You can take a big spoonful of honey and you will get all of the nutrition benefits from that. Now we are, I'm going to show you also the very yummy way how you can enjoy the honey and the recipe to do it. We call it co uh, coconut macaron and you will really love it. Let's see the recipe together. You can enjoy the coconut macaroons plain in all of their coconut glory, or you can dip them in chocolate for a little extra holiday indulgence. No matter how you serve them up or enjoy them, they're delicious, so let me show you how to make them. To get started, preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and then get your ingredients out. The great thing about this recipe is that it is super easy and only requires five ingredients, plus a little chocolate if you'd like to dip the coconut macaroons in chocolate. Crack two eggs and separate the yolk from the egg white. You'll need the egg whites for this recipe, and you can use the egg yolks in another recipe, like a custard, aioli, or my banana pudding recipe. And do be careful when you're separating the eggs and don't almost drop your yolk in like I just about did. To sweeten up the macaroons and help bind them together, you'll need a quarter cup of honey. As I mentioned on the intro, condensed milk is often used for this, but I find it to be unnecessary, and you'll notice this version is just lighter and more airy, which I love. Next, add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a quarter teaspoon of salt to the bowl, and move this over to your stove. What you'll do next is create a double boiler, so add about one to two inches of water to a pot, and then bring that to a simmer. Once the water is simmering, place your mixing bowl on top, making sure that the bottom of the mixing bowl doesn't touch the water, and then start whisking it. If the eggs heat too quickly because the bowl is touching the water, you might end up with scrambled eggs, and you don't want that. Whisk this mixture for about five minutes or until the honey is fully dissolved and it's a little frothy and warm to the touch. 
Then remove the bowl from the stove and remember that the glass will likely be a bit hot, so make sure to use a kitchen towel or oven mitts. Add two cups of unsweetened shredded coconut flakes to the mixture and stir it all together while it's still warm. The coconut should absorb all of the liquid from the bowl and if you see a little bit of liquid, just keep stirring until it's all absorbed. Line a baking tray with parchment paper, and I'm using a quarter baking sheet here, and then decide how big you wanna make these macaroons. If you use a medium cookie scoop, which is the one on the left, you'll end up with about eight large macaroons, or you could use a small cookie scoop and get about 12 bite-sized macaroons. I'm using the medium-sized cookie scoop today, which is about one and a half tablespoons worth, and if you don't have a cookie scoop, you could just use a spoon to dollop the mixture as well. I do compact the mixture just slightly in the cookie scoop with my finger to make sure that these stay together enough to be dipped in the chocolate. But if you're not planning to dip, then you don't have to worry about that. Place the baking tray in the oven and bake the macaroons for about 20 to 25 minutes for the larger size, or slightly less time if you opt for smaller. Because all ovens do cook slightly differently, I recommend watching them more closely after that 15 minute mark, and when they're lightly golden, remove them from the oven. Now this is a really important step. Make sure to let them cool completely on the baking tray. Thank you for listening for my presentation today about sweet honey and I wish you enjoy it. Thank you and have a nice day.